I can't tell you what to do. I can give you perhaps some suggestions of what I tell my children and other people to do, uh, but I can't tell you what to do. Every one of you has to make a decision based upon your own tolerance for risk. And there are no two people in this room that have the same tolerance for risk as the person sitting next to them, especially if that person is their spouse. It seems to be that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's funny how that, that works out. In the Chamberlain household, I'm the spender and my wife is the saver. And so she is always just beating me up. Do you really need another watch, George? Do you, how many watches do you really need, okay? Do you need another pair of golf shoes? How many pairs of golf shoes do you need? So anyway, every, everybody has that in their relationship, a, a, a spender and a saver, an investor and a, and a saver. So you have, to, you have to make up your decision. There are some people in this room, if you uh, go into the credit union branch where you do your business now and say, hey, I want to extend my CD from three months to six months, uh, you think you've made a tremendous leap of faith. You don't sleep for days after doing that, and you just wonder, Lord, have I made the greatest mistake of all time? And then there are others that say, uh, Chamberlain, the bus for Viejas leaves at 7.30, so keep it going here. I don't want to miss the bus. So, I mean, everybody's different. Everybody's different, has a different tolerance for risk. That's for you to decide. For some people, owning stocks is just something you cannot do. It just, it, you, you, the perceived risk of owning stocks is more than you're willing to tolerate, and that's absolutely fine. I always apply what I call the pillow test. If the last thing you think about when your, pillow, your head hits the pillow at night, and the first thing you think about in the morning when your head comes off the pillow are your investments, you are in the wrong investments, okay? Never let your investments interfere with your ability to sleep. That's the best advice I can give you. Now, I'm a big fan of the stock market. I am a, I am, I am a person, just one guy standing up here talking to you, that is 100% committed to the stock market. I have been for 30 years. I will be till I die, okay? I just, I just have that much confidence in it. I don't expect any of you to have that same level of confidence. I, I can't even imagine that anybody would, unless you've really decided and worked very hard to reach that point where you have that, that confidence. Uh, and, and so, I'm, my, my wife and I over the years of putting together the, our investments, and, and we, we have very, very simple investments, uh, made a decision that when it comes to the stock market, we're not bullish, we're not bearish, we're chickens when it comes to the stock market, okay? okay. And so what we like to do is, is own companies that reward us for being shareholders. And I am just a monster fan of dividends, of dividends. I love dividends, okay? You know, you can have a stock that goes up 20, 30%, and that can disappear overnight. Company pays you a dividend, they don't ask for it back, okay? It's your money, okay? And so, a, a dividend-paying stocks are very, uh, for, for me, a very comfortable way to grow wealth. And it's, it's worked out very well, and, and I take my lead from great investors out there, like Warren Buffett. <coughs> Warren Buffett loves dividend paying stocks. He loves dividend paying stocks so much that he doesn't even pay a dividend to people that invest in his company. He, okay. You, th he, you want me to share my dividends with you? No, it's not going to happen. No, but Buffett, there, there's a reason for that and I, I, I say that because um, Warren Buffett's great um, success has been that as a, a, a money manager and finding good investments and, and holding on to those investments for a long period of time. And uh, so th that's his way of doing it. And he says, if I start paying a dividend to you people, because I'm sitting on you know, X number of billions of dollars of cash, that it is my job to go out and invest that money on your behalf. If I just start paying you dividends, I don't need to be here anymore, okay? Because I've, I've admitted at that moment in time, I can't find any place to invest your money, so here you go, just take a dividend, okay? He says, the day I start doing that, that will be my last day working at the company. And by the way, the company where he owns and operates is called Berkshire Hathaway. You all should go to the website for Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, uh, BerkshireHathaway.com, simple as that. It will be the most boring website you have ever gone to on your life. There's not a single picture on the website. It looks like he sat and typed it out with an IBM Selectric, okay? It, it, it's so simple and straightforward. But every year he issues a letter to shareholders. And it is a fount of wisdom. It is just overwhelming with common sense investments, uh, attitudes about investment. Not He doesn't make recommendations, but just common sense about how to invest and, and, and be comfortable with your investments as well. He loves to talk about uh, a number of stocks that he owns, and I always use one as an example of the real power and strength of long-term investing, and that company is Coca-Cola. 
Uh, Buffett through uh, Berkshire Hathaway is the largest shareholder of Coca-Cola, owns about 10% of the company. You very rarely see a picture of Warren Buffett without a Coke can in his hand, okay? I mean, very, very rarely does that occur. And he's not drinking any Diet Coke. He's drinking the leaded stuff, okay? He's, he's drinking the real thing. And so, uh, in his letter a couple of years ago, he wrote uh, that he said, um, and, and over the years he's invested a sizable amount of money, obviously, into Coca-Cola, uh, and the number that sticks in my mind, and, and I, I, I probably should check this out sometime, I believe he's invested about $600 million over the years in, in Coca-Cola stock. That $600 million is now worth probably three or $4 billion, uh, something like that. Um, and, but again, it's been a long, long ride, okay? And uh, Coca-Cola is what we call a dividend aristocrat. It has not only raised, uh, paid a dividend for some 51, 52 years in a row, it has raised that dividend every year for more than 50 years. That's, that's just powerful. I, I, I say that all the time, and I, 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 I sometimes wish I could get a reaction from the audience on that because it's to me it's such an incredibly powerful statement so let me tell you how powerful it is in the words of Warren Buffett in his letter a couple of years ago he said by the year 2015 we will receive a dividend in that given year equal to the amount of money I've invested in the company he will get paid a dividend of some 600 million dollars okay so he's getting a 100% return on his money without having it, you know, that is, that is not related to the value of the stock going up or down. And then the next year, he'll get more than that because they'll raise the dividend again the next year. And that's what Buffett loves. He loves these companies that pay dividends and raise those dividends over a period of time. Again, the, uh, this is a, I think this is a current list of the uh, dividend aristocrats. And Again, look on the list here. You'll, you'll recognize most of those names. These are, are publicly traded companies that have been around for a long, long time and, um, and have that track record of, of raising their dividends on an annual basis. Uh, there are only 54 companies in the S&P 500 who qualify as dividend aristocrats. So getting paid the dividend is, uh, is good. The best thing possible is to reinvest those dividends if you possibly can because then you get to take advantage of what Albert Einstein called the eighth wonder of the world, compounding, okay? And, uh, and so that's, the, that's one of the real great strengths of this.